really understand yourself, what you are seeking. You know, mm. now if you're someone who's by yourself, or a woman who's a, who's a single woman who wants to have a child, you can speak to loved ones that you obviously you trust and you can disclose to them, and then talk through it with you. Mm. Back to getting to the habit of writing things down so you can journal if you want to, right? But the first point is really understanding what it is that you want your professional, the service you're going to, what are you seeking to get out of it, okay? The second thing is to look at truly your medical records. This is important. Request for your medical records. You are entitled to have access to them. Get to understand what it says about you because you know yourself, right? You are, I would say, like I said to one of my previous consultants is, I am at the University of Christiana Johnson. <laughs> mm. I've been schooling her. So I'm going to have a look at what you, you, you think of me or what you've written about me. Yeah. So I can compare and see how much I know really about my body. Yeah. Because once you then get that, what you can do with that information is start to research, start to ask questions, start to understand what is happening with your own body. So that means that you become part of the process, part of the decision-making process, if that makes any sense. Really think about the options you have. Again, it's looking at making, making notes from what you've read, you know, and also asking questions and approaching professionals who've written this about you and getting them to explain in layman's terms so again, within the profession, we get a lot of jargons, a lot of abbreviations that perhaps we may not understand. Depending on your condition, you could have endometriosis, you know, you could be going through um, PCOS and different conditions relating to fertility, relating to reproduction. Get to understand what that means for you, what your history, because we all have medical history. What does that mean for me? You know, once you've done that, then sit with your professional and say, what are my options? Not just some of the options, all of the options. Mm -hmm. Okay, and to understand what it means for each option. What does that mean to you? What's the impact? What's the result for each option? Does that make sense? And yes, you've done that. I'm jotting this down. Okay. <laughs> Well, see, I'm going to probably write about this on LinkedIn as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, please yeah. send me the, the list so that I could, yes. yeah, right. it, because this is really like, I'm listening to it and I'm like, oh, my goodness, you are <laughs> on point. So, yeah, go on. So, really ask, um, ask, ask the question. Why don't you start off with your, with your, you know, your healthcare practitioner, professional, ask the question. I can go back to my personal experience. When you're told, remove your tubes, remove your tubes for seven years. I'll give another example of what happened to me, the reason why it's important that we have the confidence to have a voice. I remember very specifically going to um, a meeting that was pertaining to, obviously, my body. And this professional, who's a doctor, said to me, oh, I'm going to take a case to the, to the board. Okay, we agreed. We discussed, we were okay, and time went on. And it turned out that they did not bring my case up before the board. Wow. They had just filed it away and put it to one side in the cupboard. And when I finally met with the chair of the board, the consultant, who then looked at me and said, what are you talking about? We didn't get your case because they have, obviously they have a, a case study, which usually what happens is when you have um, complex cases within fertility, they have a meeting as consultants, senior consultants, chair consultants will have a meeting, they will discuss things like the priority, you know, is this, is this needed, what's needed, and a decision is made based on the discussions that take place in that room. And so 
I was on the list, or so I thought I was on the list to go up to the discussion table. Um, that professional took the decision that they were not going to wow. place me because they had their own personal opinion. Wow. Right? So for that reason, my treatment was delayed for a further eight months. Wow. So this is why it's so important that you push and you challenge and you've got to do the reset and do the work first. So you know exactly what the process is. I've had to seek out what process of, you know, how do you have a decision to, to say I'm the priority or what, where, where I fit in in the priority list? How do you guys decide that? And how long is the process? What is supposed to happen? I had to have my professionals tell me from start to finish exactly what's involved in the process. Now don't get me wrong, that did not come easily. And what I find in these situations is that people tend to become disheartened. They give up very quickly. They get frustrated. One, because of lack of understanding. Two, sometimes they don't have the support to keep going, right? Three, because within this, <laughs> these environments, they're made to feel stupid. Mm. Because like I said to you earlier, I had one consultant who asked me where I got my medical degree from. Yes. Now, I didn't think about what was in the need for the question <laughs> to begin with. What was the purpose of the question? Is it because you feel I'm, I was being too challenging or intrusive or asking too many questions or questioning your professional conduct? Hmm. Does that make sense? And, and yes. So for me, when I advise couples, I advise women is, I know in that moment, it may seem like a very, very long, arduous process. But so long as you know what you are seeking to achieve, what that goal is, that is your um, key to keep going. That is your, your, your power, your right to keep going. Don't lose your voice. Mm. The only thing that is your identity in these spaces, you know? So I would say arrange to meet with your professionals. Once you've done all the evidence, you've got your records, you've got everything, then you can sit and have a frank discussion. And don't be afraid to ask this question, no matter how silly you think it's going to sound, ask the question because it might be what changes your journey yeah. is better. Does that make sense? So yeah. in, in, in saying that, I just, I think that research needs to be done. Um, I feel that, you know, this industry and this sector needs to be re reformed, reshaped, revamped in terms of technology, in terms of the care that we, we receive, how we are cared for. And I hope that anyone who gets to see this from a professional point of view will start to think, okay, do I speak like that in my, in my work environment? Do, I, do, do any of my colleagues speak in that manner? Do we, how do we treat our patients? How do yes. we treat And those who are listening to this on the other side, who've experienced you know, baby loss, miscarriage, I would encourage you to keep going and, and sit down with yourself or your spouse and really talk about what is it do we want? And what do you know now? Think of what you know now about your medical records, about your own health, about your own journey. Do you yeah. know enough? Mm. Do you wish to know more? Are there missing gaps? Are there unexplained things that you perhaps want to check or you perhaps want a little bit more um, explanation? And if the answer is yes, yes, and yes, then you mustn't give up because that's your voice. Definitely. I totally agree. And ha yeah, and everything you said is so on point. So I'm definitely going to get that list from you because I think it's something that people need to actually have a look at and follow. It's quite important. And having an expectation mm -hmm. to be treated Absolutely. nicely. Yes. You know, you know, and that comes from your own self-worth. It comes from how you, you feel about yourself. So, you shouldn't get less of mm -hmm. 
yes you know treatment just because you're going through you know health issues do you, yes. do you understand what i mean yes. you know you're all you're all, all, all uh, you're already maybe in a vulnerable place yes. and therefore um i think we, there needs to be a level of expectation and if those expectations are not being met mm -hmm. then don't be afraid to say no those expectations are not being met no. and, exactly. and and speak about it exactly. and and yeah and definitely that whole idea or sitting down and saying, what do I want out of this? What is my objectives? What are the outcomes? And then list them down. Yes. List those things down. And to. then, you know, discuss it with your, your practitioner. This yes. is what I, 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 I want to achieve. This is the outcome that I'm hoping to achieve. And this is what I want. This is my objectives. And let them know straight ahead. And then they could look at, and that would also guide them as well, wouldn't it? it and, in, and inform um, and inform some of the, you know, um, decisions that they they will be making, and maybe oh, and also it will it will, it will give them the opportunity also to give you the right information based on what you want to, what you want to achieve and what your object objectives are, and the more you go in there showing that you know what 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 the deal is you you've armed yourself with information that you need the better your position would be i believe um and also looking at your medical records that's one that's one i really think is important and maybe a lot of people don't realize exactly. that they can actually request it and that is an important one and also doing your research you know when we talk about trusting your intuition you know some people are like, oh this is so you know love da <laughs> you know up in the air no trusting your intuition yeah, yeah. is like, not just about you sitting down and thinking yeah I, I just feel a certain way and, and that's it you're going to include obviously your your medical records if you have information about it you're also going to look at the information and educate yourself and do your research and based on the combination of all those things you're you're more well more informed and more equipped to be able to put your case forward um and and it's astounding what you said about the consultant who decided not to put forward your case before the board yes. and didn't have the decency professional decency to say courtesy as well to say actually I'm of a different opinion. And then you can say, fine, you have a different opinion, but I still want this mm -hmm. to be done. Yes. Um, and so, and that kind of pushed back something that could have happened eight months before. And, and the, the implications of that. Can I, can I add to go on, go on. So with, with that situation, I could sense that they were reluctant. There right. should be some sense of reluctancy. Mm. And I pushed and said, this is what I would like to happen. Mm. And specifically, that that's what I wanted to happen. Yeah. And I was prepared to have an outcome because their opinion was, well, the board is just going to turn it down and say no. Right. Right. So they had made that decision for me, for, for the board, not even for me, for the board, that the board would not agree to this because this case um, wasn't a case that was, that was a priority, ultimately. And, <laughs> and so... What happened in that case was, this is what I want to say to, to everyone who's watching this, or anyone who really needs to hear this, is that you can ask for a second opinion. Right. It's so important to go for a second opinion, but also you can also go right to the top. Right? Don't be afraid to do it, because the reason it took eight months was I had to go right to the top. So that process, that time, lapsed for so long and I kept going and I turned up the person that I got to right to the top was the person who turned around and said to me I don't understand this this should have come to us this case is something that we should discuss on board <laughs> wow <laughs> right so the eight months for a lot of people think oh my god eight months persevere right persevere again I'm going to go back to if it's your dream I'm not talking about couples or people who kind of like, oh, I'll try tomorrow and see if I get pregnant. It's 
I have knocked down every door I can think of. And this is what I truly want to have. I want to know all of my options before I decide that this is no longer an option for me. Imagine talking to a professional who has an opinion, who is reluctant, who you specifically requested from and asked for them to put your case forward and they declined, right? So if you are going through this and, you are, and you're thinking to yourself, I don't know where else to, what else to do, get a second opinion. If it means you have got to pay privately, do that in that moment, get a second opinion. The other thing as well, I think in the UK, what happens is with these clinics, they tend to have other, um, one, two, three, but they have other par partners and you can opt to go to a different clinic. Mm. One. And the ones you're probably dealing with, if you don't feel that you're getting the, the treatment or if you don't feel your voice has been heard, so you can actually take other options. But always explore all options. Mm. to make the right decision for yourself mm. your journey mm. I, yeah I totally agree with getting the second op opinion if you're unsure mm. um, about it yeah this is yeah <laughs> fantastic those, those are really good good um, pointers you've given and people can take that away and look at it yeah. so how could people get in touch with you and how do you help them in terms of your coaching business so people can get in touch with me yeah. recently um mm -hmm. got to instagram so i'm on instagram my instagram handle is moving forward post miscarriage mm -hmm. and on linkedin i am christiana t johnson mm -hmm. if you type my name in you will mm -hmm. find me um, and clicking, I'm currently offering a 20 minutes, um, you know, call so that we can have a discussion. Um, if you have any questions that you want to, you want to ask, feel free to use my calendar on my about um, page, my profile to, um, book a call if you, if you feel the need to, and, and you've got questions further from, from this discussion. Um, and that's where people can find me or you can email me, um, at moving forward at postmiscarriage.com. That's okay. moving forward at postmiscarriage.com. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to link up with you on LinkedIn. I'm going to, if you can put all that information in there and I'll just put it on the, on the message as well. Yes. So that people can, can come in, in touch with you. And, and I just wanted to ask you, is the website ready yet or not? not no, yet? it isn't. Okay, okay, yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, fine. When it is, obviously, we'll be able to post that as well. So I just wanted to just really thank you and just share my gratitude um, for you joining and sharing your experience with us. I think this is so important. And I think what is, is even done is highlight and just really confirm what I've always felt in terms of our vision and our mission um, and Maya's legacy that this is really really very important mm -hmm. um, thing to to push forward um, with and then begin to equip people and empower them yeah. so that they can be fully participating in their decision and just don't feel like they haven't got any powers or any sort of influence into the decision so I, i'm grateful for that so yes i will be yeah go on sorry the, question, the second question you asked me is how do i work with my clients so mm. we, what i what i do with them is we sit down we have discussions we look at a personalized a very much bespoke tailored um program for them depending on where they are on their journey what they're seeking um and we, we go from there Mm. So it's personalized, it's more kind of unique to that individual. Yes. Um, and their and their journey. That's that's fantastic. Each person has a different journey. Mm. You know, um, I think I'd be remiss to kind of sit down and create this program that no one really understands or doesn't doesn't really um support my you know, clients at all. So we I tend to tailor the, the programs for them to so that they feel that this is for them. You know, mm. they decide they get to be included 
in mm. the process and um yeah so that's that's what I, what I do with my clients <laughs> fantastic so if you're out there please get in touch with um Christiana she's full of energy <laughs> she has years of experience and she is I can definitely be a, I can definitely recommend her I'm making a recommendation right now Thank so you. do get in touch I will put all her details in the comment section um, when I upload this and I will also upload this on the different platforms so you'll be on Twitter and uh, our different platforms so people can kind of reach out to you when they want to so yeah have a great evening my love Thank to the so family much. Oh my God. and um, hey. I'll I'll connect with you on LinkedIn. Take care very much. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.